good evening everyone so myself uh, rishikesh today we will be discussing on some of the concepts on data engineering so the agenda for the webinar is as follows so we will start with understanding uh, what is the underlying principle of data engineering okay the core concepts of uh, pipeline design in uh, data engineering which is the heart of the uh, data engineering process and we will also discuss what are the uh, different storage options that are available and how do you choose the best type of storage while you are designing the data pipeline and then uh, we will also discuss the different data processing tools that are available and uh, most widely used tools in the uh, domain of data engineering by different organizations that are there and which type of uh, storage uh, and processing unit trade off should be done while you are uh, architecting your pipeline and then uh, we will discuss about data modeling and uh, schema design that is there okay. which is towards the end part of your uh, data pipeline process and then we will see what is uh, big data and uh, how cloud technologies will help us overcome the uh, challenges that we have with big data or as an alternative to on prem data pipeline uh, tools that we have and then we will discuss on some of the best practices in uh, data engineering and then finally we will conclude with the some of the uh, most widely used tools and frameworks in the design of the pipeline so this will be the agenda for the session today so let us uh, start by understanding uh, what is uh, data engineering so data engineering is a process it, there are many steps that are involved uh, in the process of uh, data engineering the first step is to collect the data that is there collecting the data from different sources that are present storing the data in the appropriate storage devices that is there for example the data that you are collecting might come say in the form of csv files uh, once in a week or uh, once in a month and so on or there could be data that is come uh, continuously coming from a iot sensor correct so and the type of the data that is coming from all of these sources are in different form so one single storage will not be good for storing all kinds of data for example to store image and videos that type of storage that you will require as compared with the uh, csv files are completely different so where do you store the data that you have collected and in which uh, format will you store that is the second step third is processing so once the data has been collected and stored how do you process the data and how do you decide how much of hardware resources are required to process that particular data what kind of processing should be done for that particular data and finally it will end with analyzing the data so analyzing the data will lead us to generation of the insights so that the insights can be presented on a dashboard which actually solves the business problem for the organization that is so all these uh, four steps put together is what is data engineering and what data engineers do out there whenever they say that they are building a data pipeline so the data pipeline mainly consist of these four steps as a data engineer what exactly is your job so designing this particular pipeline correct how do we collect the data that is coming in various formats may, could be coming from multiple geographical locations correct and then how do those uh, systems integrate with the, uh, the databases or the storage uh, devices that you have and then how do we process what kind of tools and frameworks you are using to process that whether you want to process in real time or whether you want to process in batch correct and finally how do you analyze that data and put it on the dashboard so which tool should be used which block sits where because there is a scenario where you can do processing first and then storing correct so designing the entire pipeline and then finally building the data models for for analysis of the data is the job of the data engineer so this is about uh, the 
underlying principle of data engineering. Now coming to the role of the data engineer. So data engineers are uh, is a term that is actually used uh, with respect to an organization. So there could be uh, a large enterprise which will have a team of data engineers who will be, be designing and building multiple data pipelines that are there. Right? Or there could be a medium sized organization where there would be a combination of data engineer and a data scientist who will be taking care of both the machine learning part and the designing of the pipeline or a startup kind of an organization where a one single person or a data engineer is responsible for building multiple data pipelines for the audience. So irrespective of the type of the uh, enterprise that you are with, the role of the data engineer will be more or less the same. So in higher organizations, it is the responsibility of the team, but on smaller organizations, it could be responsible. A single person could be responsible for this task. The first thing that the data engineer does is design the pipeline, that is architect the pipeline, which service should sit where and how do these services interconnect with each other and how do you ensure security is there for the data that is moving between these services or the tools that you are using for building the pipeline. So architect or design the pipeline and then build the actual pipeline that is there, which will move the data from your source system, finally into data warehouses and data lakes. Okay. So data lake is like a place where you would want to store your raw data that is there, okay? So any data that before you start processing, you want to collect and place it in a centralized uh, place, that particular place is called as a data lake. And on the other side, data warehouse is a place where you would want to put all your process data, which is ready for analysis or which is ready for training the machine learning. So this is the uh, underlying difference between a data lake and a data warehouse. So designing and building the pipeline is one of the roles of a data engineer. Develop and maintain data warehouses and data lakes. That is the second responsibility that a data engineer would have. So whenever uh, we are building a data warehouse for storing our processed data, so what kind of data modeling scheme we are implying? What is the schema of our data? And how do we ensure that all the data that is in the distributed uh, fashion can be used for analysis purpose. So how do we store them as different tables or as different documents in case of NoSQL kind of data and so on. So designing that is one of the responsibilities of the data. Similarly, how do you design the uh, data lakes? So whenever the raw data is coming and hitting a data lake, for how long the data should be present there? Okay. And from data lake to data warehouse, how will the uh, data get moved? Okay. So all these are some of the responsibilities of the data engineer. So that is to design and maintain the data warehouse and the data lake. Third step, implement uh, data quality checks and ensure that data is accurate and consistent. So this is one of the important aspects that has to be taken care in the entire process of data engineering, starting from the collecting phase till the data modeling or the analysis phase. That is there. So at each and every phase, you have to check for the quality of the data and ensure that the data that you are processing is still accurate because if the data gets uh, modified uh, in an undesired fashion, then the results that you are obtaining from the analysis will go wrong. Right. Therefore, you have to ensure that data is accurate and consistent. Next responsibility. Develop and deploy the data processing pipelines that is there. So here you might see this particular two words. First one is the data processing pipeline that is there and the data pipeline itself. Correct. So the data pipeline, as discussed in the previous slide, will have four blocks, collecting, storing, processing, and analyzing the data or modeling the data towards the end. 
So a data processing pipeline is a subset of a data pipeline which will focus only on the processing part of the data. So some of the examples of the data processing pipelines are the ones that perform EL, extract and load, ETL, extract, transform and load, or ELT, extract, load and transform. So even though processing is just one block of the data pipeline, but in the actual pipeline that processing can have multiple steps or it can, it can comprise of 10 or 20 steps like that, right? So how do you design that particular, only the processing block is the data processing pipeline. So a data processing pipeline is again a pipeline, which is a subset of data pipeline, but related only to the processing block of your data pipeline. And it has three variants, extract and load, extract, transform and load, and extract, load and transform. So how do we design these uh, ETL or ELT pipelines? That is uh, one of the important aspect of your data pipeline. Next, build data models that can be used for analysis and for generation of the insights. So data model is like uh, the blueprint for your data, how the different type of data that you have collected, how it should be stored for easy access and for answering the business problems or for analyzing the data and to generate insights from that particular data or to identify patterns in the data so that you can improve your service or the product of your organization. So building the data model is again, uh, which would ensure that it will help you analyze the data. And the last one, work with data scientists to deploy machine learning models into production. So there will be scenarios where uh, the data pipeline that you have built and the data that is ready for analysis or the insights that you have generated, right? Based on that, you need to train a machine learning model for automating a specific task in an organization. So in that particular scenario, the data engineer is also responsible to work in coordination with data scientists for training the machine learning models or for deploying the machine learning models into production. That is to incorporate them with your data, correct? A simple example of what we can think of is, say any e-commerce website that you take A data pipeline would be uh, responsible for, say, uh, fetching the user data, fetching his order information, and then updating his uh, sh shipping information or the tracking information of his product. Okay. And then ensure that uh, the payment processing is done and these things. So for each of this particular task, you could have a data pipeline that can be, uh, that can be designed or architected in an e-commerce company. But for the users, how do you ensure that users make more and more purchases from your e-commerce website? That is based on the discounts that you gave or say uh, based on the recommendation of the product that you are giving, correct? So how do you recommend products and how do you decide how much discount to give for a particular product? So that comes from the machine learning part. So a data pipeline can consist of machine learning part towards the end to service your customers or to provide best customer or user experience. So from an e-commerce perspective, so we have seen how important our data pipeline is and how the data pipelines are integrated with the machine learning models for performing some of the tasks. So this is about the role of the data engineer. And coming to the skill set that the data engineer should uh, possess. So definitely a data engineer should have good programming skills. Okay. So most of the desired uh, programming languages are say Python or Java. So these are the two programming languages that are most widely used in building your uh, data processing pipelines. And then because of the storage involvement that is there, so we will require the SQL uh, commands uh, skills also to operate with your uh, databases. 
So these three can be uh, considered as the primary programming skills for a data engineer. And there are wide range of data engineering tools that uh, a data engineer must be aware of so that it will easily help him deal with the big data and also help in designing the data uh, pipelines that is there. So we will discuss some of the uh, data engineering tools towards the end of the session. Data modeling skills. So based on the kind of queries that are coming, based on that type of the analytical data that is required for the organization, we have to design the data model according to that. So what are the different type of, types of schema designs that are there and which is the best for your organization? So choosing the best uh, schema for storing the data is one of the data modeling skill that a data engineer should possess. Next is the cloud computing skills. So in the traditional uh, way of doing the data pipeline were generally built on on-premise and then deployed on on-premise. But nowadays, uh, there is a lot of uh, demand for moving this particular data pipelines into cloud environments because the organizations will not be able to maintain the on-premise hardware or they will not be able to deal with the spikes or the demands that can come. And the problem with any data pipeline is that the data is growing large day by day. So for all these, it is better to have cloud computing skills because any organization which is having a huge amount of data like terabytes or petabytes will eventually move into the cloud environment. And finally, some basic machine learning skills are very important. So as I previously said, if it's a huge organization, you will have a separate team of data scientists and machine learning engineers, developers, data engineers, data analysts, and so on. But there are also organizations where a few team members combined together will perform all the tasks. So some basic machine learning skills are uh, really uh, required for, a, for the completeness of a data engineer. So this is some of the skill sets that uh, a data engineer should possess. So now we'll move to the uh, second topic and discuss the design of the pipeline itself. So as previously discussed, data engineering is the process of architecting and building a data pipeline. And in this particular data pipeline, what are the different steps that we have? Collect store, process, and analyze the data, correct? So how do you arrange these particular four blocks in what order you are arranging them? And what are the tools that you are using to build this particular uh, four phases that you have or the four steps that you have? And what tools and frameworks are you employing for each of these particular phases or the steps? So data pipeline will consist of these four blocks. So at each and every stage, we need to decide what tool, what framework to be used and, and what type of hardware you would want to deploy. So the steps to design this particular data pipeline, which consists of these four blocks, will vary on the specific needs of the organization. So we will see in the subsequent uh, slides, what are those variations and how can you choose this particular steps based on the need of the organization. So all the four steps put together, we can have several components that we can have in our data pipeline. The first component is obviously the data sources. So from where is the data originating? Where is the data getting generated from? Correct. So you have to identify where the data is getting generated. It could be from IoT sensor or it could be from an application that you have deployed, correct? such as an user registration form. right? So that comes from the application. Or there could be some sensor, say, uh, from a smartwatch or any smart appliance. So that is the sensor information that is coming from IoT. So where does the data originate from? That is one of the uh, first component that you will always consider in the designing of the pipeline. So some of the examples where data can originate from are from databases. So there could be some database which collects all the data and periodically dumps it into your pipeline. 
say from social media platforms so you could have text information you could have videos images any of this particular data that is coming or it could be coming from sensors and iot devices that are so for each type of the data source the way you have to integrate it with your data pipeline will be different that is the reason we always have to identify the data sources first second step is data extraction so this process uh, actually involves moving the data from the source into the pipeline correct once you have identified the data sources how do you want to move this data into your data pipeline is the second step okay. so three ways of moving the data from source into the pipeline that is the data extraction part one is via the apis that is there so you make a http request to the apis and you get the data the next is batch processing where say from a transactional database every fortnight you you take a sql dump and then you push it onto your data pipeline or you export the data into a csv file and then you push it into your pipeline and the last one is the streaming one where data that is coming from sensors or iot devices right so if there is a temperature sensor say you are measuring temperature every 5 minutes or 10 minutes or every half an hour or every second correct so this is the data that is continuously hitting your pipeline so that is called as the stream data so these are the three ways in which you can extract the data from your data sources once the data has been extracted and moved into the pipeline the next step is to pre process the data so this will inf involve many of the cleaning and the transformation tasks that are there such as identifying missing values or say converting data from one format into another format and so on so all this particular data pre processing how do you perform on the data so that the kind of transformations that you are applying here will eventually decide will be based on the type of the data model that you have chosen or the type of the schema that you are designed fourth one data analysis so once the data has been cleaned and transformed and ready for analysis so you perform data analysis where you can run any of the statistical analysis to get uh, patterns from the data or identify some information from the data that is there or train the machine learning model and finally the last component is the data delivery so after the analysis whatever the insights that you have generated or whatever the data is trying to convey us we need to share it with the organization so that it will help them in taking the decision so the best way of showcasing the information is via the dashboards that are available which will consist of reports and uh, charts that are there or in some cases you can also generate alerts for important changes in the data that is happening so these are the uh, five components of the data pipeline that we can have so now we know what are the components of the data pipeline now we will discuss what are the steps that are involved in designing this particular data pipeline so to design the data pipeline the first thing that we have to do is define what is the goal so what should the data pipeline give us at the end of the day do we want to just build a data warehouse or do we want to automate the analysis and the dashboard building part or are we preparing the data for training a machine learning model what is the end product from our pipeline so what is the goal of building that particular pipeline do we want to build a recommendation system or do we want to use the data for uh, training uh, other machine learning models which is used for prediction in some other service okay so defining that particular goal will make us easy in architecting or designing the pipeline the next step is to identify where the data is coming from and in what format the data is coming from. so if the data is coming from a web page then you will have an access to api so that you can read the data then you know that it is in the form of a http request and a http response 
or if it is coming from a database, uh, you know that you have to run SQL queries uh, at periodic intervals to fetch the data from the database. So identifying where the data is coming from and in what format is at most importance because that is the one that will help you write your data processing pipeline. That is your ETL. Third one, so design how the data is to be extracted, how the data is to be transformed, what transformations need to be performed and how should we analyze the data. So what kind of aggregations that you want to find, correct? So the third step involves designing or architecting the four blocks of the data pipeline itself. The next part is building. So once we know that uh, the kind of transformations that we want to apply or how we want to extract the data and so on, building the pipeline will just involve coding and then writing the exact code that is required to perform data extraction, transformation and analysis. So for performing extraction, transform and analysis, what is the tools or the frameworks that you will be using and why do you want to choose that particular tool, correct? So that is the building part. Sixth is to test. So once you have developed and uh, built your pipeline, you have to make a test before you deploy it in production, okay? Once the tests are successful, then you can go ahead and deploy your data pipeline that is make it available to the users or ensure that the data that is being processed and analyzed is helping the organization take decisions. And the last one or the important one is to keep monitoring the pipeline. Why we have to track or monitor the pipeline? Because say today you are expecting 10 GB of data to come from a SQL database. And say six months down the line, because of the number of users have increased in the organization, instead of 10 GB, you are getting say 50 GB of data. So your pipeline that you have designed, your storages that you have designed should be able to work with such increased amount of the data that is coming. So you should have sufficient hardware resources to operate on that particular data. And also the transformations that you have defined should also have less processing time so that whether it is 10 GB or 50 GB of data, the time taken to process is not a very huge amount of time. So the latency has to be kept to minimum. So that is why monitoring the data pipeline is very important to track for the performance of the pipeline, which will generally gets affected with the amount of data that is coming in. So once we know how to uh, design the data pipelines now, now we will look at what are the different uh, storages, data storage tools that are available and how do you choose which storage is the apt one in which particular scenario. So there are many different storage options that you will get and each storage has its own advantages and disadvantages that is there. So based on the organization for whom you are building the data pipeline and then depending on the goal of the data pipeline and depending on the type of the data that you are getting for your pipeline, you can choose the best storage services. The most widely used data storage is the relational databases. So whenever your data is in the form of a table, you have data in the form of rows and columns, correct? We call that as the structured data. In this particular scenario, Relational databases are some of the best choices that you can um, go for. The reason being this particular uh, relational databases are say they can handle huge amount of writes that are happening to your database. Okay. And within those uh, relational databases, you can have separate tables, say for users, we can have one table and for the orders that the users has placed in the e-commerce website, you have another table. For tracking his payment, you have another table and so on. Okay. 
So whenever you want to check the aggregated information of a user in the past six months, what is the amount of orders he has placed or what is the highest amount of order that he has placed in the six months? So to answer these kind of questions, so the relational databases are very efficient in answering those queries that will involve joining of the tables. Say, uh, how do you join your user table with the order table or with the sales table to identify the um, highest uh, amount of money that he has spent in a given department. But one problem that you will see with the relational databases is that as the size of the data scales, right? So if you are moving at uh, say terabytes and petabytes of data in that particular scenario, your relational databases will actually uh, fail to answer those particular queries that you have been asking on say certain GBs of data. Okay. And the next thing is if any of your data source is sending you data in the unstructured format, then it becomes difficult for you to uh, play with the relational databases. Say if your uh, organization having some kind of images that is being, uh, that is a part of your data, then uh, relational databases might not be the best choice to go for. So before we continue with the session, I think uh, there was one question from Abhinash. So is it the end of big data migrating to cloud is safe for the BI, uh, BFSI uh, projects? So yeah, uh, Abhinash, uh, if you're here, uh, migrating to cloud is still safe for any of the banking, financial or insurance based services that are there. Okay. So because if you are implementing the data pipeline on on-premise, the data security is the, your responsibility. So your uh, data governance policies are for you to implement, but uh, obviously migrating to cloud, uh, cloud will definitely have uh, a team of uh, security experts whose uh, security practices would, you, would be much better than what a uh, team of, uh, small team of uh, security people can implement for an on -prem. So I hope uh, this answers your question. Yeah, so moving further, uh, just to recap, uh, we were discussing the uh, different types of data storages that would be available in the process of building the data pipeline. The first one was uh, the relational database. Second one being uh, the NoSQL databases. So whenever you are having data in the unstructured format, okay, such as documents, JSON files, and so on, right? So something called as the key value pairs. So whenever your data is having key value pairs, then it is always uh, best to go with the NoSQL databases. So in comparison with the relational databases, obviously NoSQL databases are more flexible okay? and it can uh, hold a very huge amount of data, terabytes or petabytes of data. But whenever you are running queries on these kind of data, NoSQL databases are generally less efficient compared to the relational databases. Queries take more time when you are storing your data in the NoSQL databases. Okay. So some of the examples of the NoSQL databases that uh, you can uh, think of is a MongoDB is one popular one that is there. But apart from that, you have something called as a Redis. Uh, it is actually a memory store. It is also a category of uh, NoSQL database that is there. Or you also have columnar databases uh, that are there like Cassandra and so on. So these are some of the examples of the NoSQL databases that you can consider. The third uh, storage option that we can think of is a data warehouse. So data warehouses are uh, generally good choice for storing the large amount of data which are required for the analytical purposes. So if you are storing your data for analysis, then data warehouses are the best. So whenever we say data warehouse, there are different components within the data warehouse, right? It comes with a storage layer, which will not be as simple as a NoSQL database or a relational database. The storage layer would be a complex uh, kind of uh, fashion, okay? And then you will have a query layer. 
So it comes with an inbuilt uh, query analyzer or uh, say a query pro tool that is there, which will process your queries on the data that is. There. And it will also come with some of the monitoring tools built in. So a data warehouse is one which has all these things put together. So it will have your query processor. It will also give you the hardware resources required to process the query. It will also give you the memory required to store the data and everything. And one good thing about data warehouses is that it is the way the data is stored and the way the query gets executed on the data, right? That is optimized to give you the aggregations for analysis of the data with minimal latency. And it also offers good scalability features. So any data warehouse that you choose will be scalable with the increase in the amount of the data that is there. However, one disadvantage with data warehouse is that if you want to store some uh, real time data that is coming into your uh, data pipeline, then data warehouse might not be the best suitable. So one such example of a data warehouse is Snowflake. So apart from this, you have many data warehouses with respect to the cloud uh, options. Fourth one is a data lake. So data lake is a best place to store all your raw and unformatted uh, data that is there, where you need not to worry about the type of the data that is being ingested. So whether you want to store an image, whether you want to store a CSV file, whether you want to store a backup of your database, okay? So you want to store anything that is there, then data lake is the place to go for, okay? So one of the important features of the data lake is that they should be scalable and cost effective. So these are the two important characteristics of a data lake. So with the increase in the uh, data that you would want to store, it should easily scale to the amount of size that is required. And for storing your data, the cost should be less. And fifth and final type of storage is to store your data in the cloud storage. So if you want to store the data in the cloud, uh, environment so you will have options uh, for no sql databases you will have options for your rdbms databases and every cloud environment will offer you a data lake and a data warehouse that is there so you will have all the four options in the cloud okay so one of the best things about the cloud storage is that your data can be easily accessed from the multiple locations with minimal redundancy Okay, and also any storage that you store that you choose in the cloud will always be scalable and will be cost effective as compared to the on prem deployment of those services. So now that we have discussed five types of storages that we can use. So let us take an example of how to choose the type of the storage based on the requirement of the project for an organization. So in the example one, let us say that we want to store a large amount of structured data that is there, okay? That needs to be analyzed. So the goal is to analyze the data. So among the five options that we have, so when we say structured data, we will, first thing that comes to our mind is RDBMS, but the goal of the pipeline is to ensure that data is available for quick analysis that is there. So because analysis is the goal of the data pipeline, the answer is to go with the data warehouse rather than a traditional RDBMS uh, database, which is good for writing the data, but it is not good for reading or making aggregations on the data. So the answer is data warehouse. In a second example, say we have a project where we want to store unstructured data that needs to be accessed from multiple locations or multiple geographical places that is there. So then the best option is to go with the cloud storage. So in the cloud, uh, any of the storage service that you choose, you will have an option for uh, data redundancy and you can also have duplicate data in multiple geographical locations. So whether you are accessing from India or from US, you will be having the same amount of latency, which will not be the case 
when you are doing it on a on prem so to be to ensure that data is accessible from multiple locations we are going with the cloud storage so this is the answer so this is how you choose uh, what kind of storage device is required based on the requirements of the project so to narrow down to the type of the storage devices some of the questions that you can answer or these questions will make you choose those particular answers quickly what is the type of the data that you are storing and what is the size of the data that is currently and what is that you are expecting in the next 6 months or next one year like that what is the frequency at which the data will be accessed from that particular location correct so if it is a structured data and if you are not accessing the data frequently then a rdbms database will work but if it is a structured data that you will be frequently accessing it or performing more number of reads then data warehouse is better so similarly the next is what is the requirement of scalability so in the next 6 months what is your projection of the volume of the data that you will be receiving and what is the budget that you have for the data storage and finally what is the security and the data integrity requirements that you have so what is the security that is required for your data and then the what is the uh, data integrity that you are expecting for the modifications so these are some of the questions that you answer will uh, help you ensure or narrow down to the best data storage option that you have so now we will move on to the uh, data processing part so processing the data means uh, to transform the data from one format to other format or clean the data or check for any uh, missing values or check for any of the inaccurate or inconsistent data and so on so the first type of processing is batch processing so as the name suggests batch processing it involves processing large amounts of data in one shot okay and then this particular large amount of data that is getting processed it is not continuous it is only at regular intervals of time say weekly ones you process the data then that is an example of batch process so one of the problems with employing batch processing is that you will be able to process large amount of time in a single shot but the processing time can be very very slow until and unless you have very powerful hardware associated with it so this is one way to process the data that you have extracted and stored the second type of processing is uh, real time processing or it is also called as the stream processing so stream processing is the best choice when you want to process the data as soon as it is generated or as soon as it is moved into your data pipeline so which is basically in real time you want to transform the data for say uh, you are having a say for example a uber kind of an application right you want to track the uh, real time traffic and you want to track the real time location of the driver and the user and then make an estimate of your cost in real time correct so for these kind of data pipelines you generally go with the stream processing that is so some of the tools that you can think of is apache kafka and apache spark which will help you process the uh, real time jobs that is there and some of the uh, example scenarios is fraud detection so if there is a credit card transaction or a payment transaction of any type upi or whatever you want to check for a fraud detection then that particular answer should be obtained in real time whether the given transaction is fraud or not fraud right or you want to do some kind of market analysis even in these kind of scenarios you will be able to use the real time processing instead of the batch processing so this real time processing implementation can be little bit complex and expensive as compared to your batch pipeline but the results will be immediate the results will be immediate okay and short amount of time third one is hybrid processing so hybrid processing is the scenario where uh, you can think of a uh, same pipeline that will get executed on both batch data as well as real time data so the real time data that is getting ingested you are performing transformation 
but you want the same set of transformations to be applied to batch data, which comes say once in a day or once in a week. So in this particular scenario, the pipeline that you have built should support both batch and stream data. So one such framework that help you do that is Apache Nifi. So a same pipeline can work on both kinds of data. And if you are uh, good at Python or at uh, Java, then uh, you can also take a look at Apache Beam, which will help you build one particular pipeline for processing both kinds of data. So hybrid processing requirement is a very rare requirement, but most of the times you will be able to uh, choose between batch and stream processing. So how to decide whether to go with batch, stream or hybrid? So again, you answer some set of questions. What is the type of the data that you need to process? And what is the size of the data set that you have to process? Say for example, if you are getting an uh, uh, sensor measurement, so which comprises of temperature, pressure, altitude, and so on. It is just three or four records that you are manipulating. But if you are getting a, a say CSV dump, then it is huge amount of data that is. So depending on the size of the data, you either go with batch or stream. Depending on the frequency of the data processing. So obviously, if it is at regular intervals, you go with batch. Or if it is real time processing that is required, then you go with stream. And again, finally, the budget constraint and what is the scalability requirement? So today you have 10 users, you implement a real time pipeline and say in six months, you, uh, your application is a hit or uh, and your users or your website is a hit and your users increase to 10,000. So can that particular 10,000 records still be processed in real time to do so? What is the scalable hardware that is required? So answering these questions will help you decide whether to implement a stream pipeline or a batch pipeline. So how do you trade off between the storage and the data processing part? So let us take an uh, example to understand. So if we take a fraud detection system that we have, so which requires a real time processing, and you also need to consider the size of the data set uh, that is there because to detect a fraud, there are many different things that you need to consider, correct? So what is the user account from which geographical location the uh, transaction was initiated and the characteristics of the users and so many other things that comes, right? What are the security features involved, so on. In this kind of scenario, because it is real time processing, you can choose Apache Kafka or Apache Spark to ingest your data and to process your data. And finally, choose a traditional RDBMS database for storing your data because huge amount of data can be quickly written only into traditional RDBMS uh, databases. It cannot be quickly written into a data warehouse. So later on from the database, you can fetch the data and move it into data warehouse where you run your analysis. So in the second example, if we take customer analytical system, okay, where you are analyzing the historical data of the customer, and then say you want to make a prediction of the product or you want to suggest, give specific discounts to the customers and so on, right? Or based on the all the customers that you have, you want to decide when you want to go with a, a big billion day kind of a sale or so on, and which products you want to offer over there. So to answer all these questions, we make use of customer analytic system. So in this particular scenario, you would definitely go with the, the data warehouse because it is an analytical workload for storing the data. And these kind of analysis, you don't do it on an everyday basis, right? You only do it once in a month or once in a quarter. So and hence batch processing is the right uh, trade off to go for a customer analytical system. Store the data in your data warehouse and do batch processing. So, this is how you do a trade off between storage and processing while you are designing your data pipeline. Now, coming to the data modeling and the schema design part. So, as previously mentioned, data modeling is like a blueprint for how we are storing your data, be it in the database, data warehouse, data lake, wherever you are storing the data. What is the blueprint for your data, correct? 
how the data is stored and organized. That is what the data model will tell us. So the different types of data models that you have is the first one, the entity relationship model. So this is a graphical way of modeling your data. So where you will have uh, entities, so which could be say your customer table or your orders table and so on. Attributes, so which will tell the names of the columns that could be present in the data. And the relationship, which will tell the relationship between say column one in a table one with a column five on a table two and so on. So first one is the ER model. Second one is again the uh, relation model. So this is a very simple one where you choose how many different tables you want. Okay. How many different tables are required and in each table, how many columns should be there? What should be those columns to store your data? This is the traditional way of uh, designing your uh, data model. Third one is the NoSQL uh, model. So again, in the NoSQL model, so because you always have key value pairs, right? How do you want to nest those key value pairs? Say, if you are having JSON data, so which is the data at the higher level and which is that data at the lower level? So how do you define those uh, subclass variables? Uh, that is NoSQL modeling. Fourth one is the graph models. So you, in case of graph models, you have nodes and edges something similar to your ER model that is there. So where nodes represent your entities or tables that you would want to store in your database and it just tell the relationship between the tables that are. So four or most widely used data modeling uh, types. So now coming to the schema design. So after you have chosen the type of the data modeling, now you have to define the schema. So what does the schema tell us, right? The specific type of the data model that you have chosen and how to structure that to store the data in your database. Two my widely used schemas. The first one is the star schema. Second one is the snowflake schema. So in case of star schema, you have something called as a fact table. So you have a fact table and then you have multiple dimension tables, say D1, D2 and so on. So a fact table will contain say list of all the names of the tables, say your customer table, your order table, your payment table and so on. And D1 could be your customer table, D2 can be the orders table and D3 can be your payment table. Second one is the snowflake uh, schema. So before we go into snowflake uh, schema, uh, I want to add one more word on the star schema. So the dimension are the actual tables which contain your data and they will always store the data in your denormalized fashion. So denormalized means what? Uh, you have redundant data. So multiple data can be, uh, data can be present multiple times. So there can be duplicates. In case of snowflake schema, it is little bit similar or an extension of star schema that is there. You still have central fact table, but you will have multiple dimension tables that are. So you have a fact table, which is connected to dimension table D1 and dimension table D1 can be connected to D11 and D12. And a fact table, on the other hand, could be connected to a table D2, which can consist of D21, D22, and D23. So this clearly tells us that each of the data that is present in these uh, dimension tables are in the normalized format. So there will be no data duplicacy or redundancy. So this is the only uh, difference between star and snowflake schema, okay? So in case of snowflake uh, schema, joining and getting the data is very easy, but uh, in case of star schema, your, the data is uh, present at one place. So uh, it's just that you need to write the appropriate uh, filters that is required in your SQL commands. So 
So now moving on with the big data and cloud technologies. So whenever you are designing your data pipeline, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that what is the amount of data that you are dealing with and in the near future, what is the expected amount of data that you might need. So let us start with the definition of big data. So big data means it is a data that is ever growing too large amount of data to deal with, correct? So these data are generally uh, generated by enterprises and individuals that are present. So whenever you are processing big data, we are always talking about volumes of the data in the terabytes or in the petabytes or higher than this. So anything under mm -hmm. megabytes and gigabytes are not treated as big data. So terabytes and petabytes of data, if you're dealing with, then it is a big data. So some of the challenges that you always uh, face with the big data, first one is volume. So huge volume of data that is uh, coming in that has to be stored and processed makes it difficult to deal with big data. So if you are getting a SQL backup of a database, say, which is one GP, that is still fine. If you are getting a backup of a database, which is one TB, which could have hundred tables or thousands of tables, then dealing that kind of data is really difficult. Second is the velocity. So the data is constantly changing and growing. So with what velocity the data is coming and hitting you. So that is basically the characterization of your batch data or stream data. Third one, variety. So the data that is coming can be in different formats and how do you deal with all different types of formats that are there. So one user could send text data, one user could send image data or the third user can send video data and so on. Right. So how do you integrate these different types of data coming in different formats? That is one challenge with big data. Fourth one, veracity. So whenever there is inaccurate data or incomplete data, so there are some missing fields in the data that is coming, some missing records. How do you trust that particular data or how do you manipulate that particular data before you make decisions? So these are some of the challenges with the big data that you have. So the answer to deal with big data is to move to cloud technologies. So cloud technology is nothing but a set of computing services, which could be your um, CPUs, memory, storage, and so on, that are delivered to you over internet. What are some of the benefits of using cloud technologies for big data? Scalability. So you can easily scale up as well as scale down your resources based on the requirements that you are receiving. Second one, elasticity. So you can dynamically or in with, with no time provision and deprovision the resources that is required, correct? So say for example, you know that average number of customers that are using your application is thousand, but say when you offer a discount uh, like big billion days or this independence day sale and so on, thousand users will immediately spike to 5,000 users for that particular day or for the duration of your sale. And then after those sale duration, again, it will boil down to 1000. So how do you handle this kind of scenario? So elasticity property of the cloud will help you do that. Or say in a given day for Uber kind of an application at morning, say 9 to 11 and in the evening, say from 5 to 7, you will see a huge spike in the users, right? And in the other time, it will be comparatively less. So only for those two hours, you have to ensure that you have sufficient resources. And then after those two hours, again, you can release those resources because your number of user base has rent. So to handle these kind of situations, you will require scalability and elasticity. Third one is cost effectiveness. Obviously, as compared to on-prem, where you always take the resources and keep it with you, whether you are using it or not, with the cloud, you always have an option for pay as you go model where based on the amount of resources you have used, you will be paying money for a problem. Fourth one, reliability. 
So obviously the uh, services in the cloud are more reliable compared to the on-prem because of two reasons. One, there could be an inbuilt redundancy of data. So say even if one of the data center shuts down, the data can be replicated in the other data center. So nothing happens to your data. But in an on-prem scenario, if your servers go down, your application go down or your website goes down. Next is security. So if you are implementing security on your on-prem cloud, you have to have your own uh, uh, security team and also the kind of algorithms that they are developed. But uh, in case of cloud, uh, the cloud providers will obviously have security experts with them and they will be ensuring the security of the entire infrastructure in a better fashion. Sixth is accessibility. Your on-prem data centers can be geographical location specific, but when it comes to cloud, you will be able to access the data from anywhere across the world with minimum or similar amount of latency. Because all the infrastructure that is present on the cloud would be connected with a very high speed network. That is there. The network would be of very high bandwidth. So this is about uh, the cloud technologies to deal with uh, big data. Now coming to some of the best practices that you can think of. So whenever you're designing, implementing your data pipeline, the first thing that you have to always ensure that the quality of the data is maintained across all the blocks of your pipeline. So at each and every block, you have to ensure that the data is accurate the data is complete, there are no missing values, and the data is consistent. Say for example, uh, today the measurements are done in one unit and tomorrow it changes to other unit, then that is an inconsistent data, right? So you have to ensure that the unit of measurement is the same across all the devices or across time. And ensure that that data is delivered in a timely fashion for analytical reports or for real-time process. So how do we ensure that the quality of the data is maintained? So the first thing to do is to define the standards for quality of the data. So what is more important and what is less important? Profile your data to see the format, say distribution of the data, then it becomes easy for you to process it. Clean the data to ensure that there are no missing values or incomplete values. Validate the data so that accuracy is maintained and monitor the data so that it is consistent across time. So this is how you achieve uh, data quality whenever you are building the data pipeline. And the next one is to ensure data security. So obviously whenever your, uh, your organization involves customer data or sensitive information, right? So how do you ensure that uh, unauthorized people do not access that particular data, right? For example, the sales team should not be able to access the orders information or payment information and the payments team will not have access to the order information that is there. Okay. So how do you ensure there is no unauthorized access and there is no disclosure of the customer data that is there or any financial data that is there? And how do you ensure that the data that you have stored or while you are processing, it is not getting modified in an unusual format or it is not getting deleted or destructed. So for all this, you have to ensure that you have a good encryption algorithm for encrypting your data while it is stored or while it is moving from one service to other service. You ensure that authentication is employed for all the employees of the organization and also for the users so that the data is confidential. Access control, which team in the organization gets access to what amount of data. And monitoring the data activity. So who is reading a database or what table or what column has been uh, accessed by the user or an employee of the organization that is monitoring the data activity. And ensure that you back up your data regularly so that no destruction can be possible. And last one is data governance. 
so data governance are uh, generally the policies or the standards which we call as the law of the land correct so in us the policies might be different in india policies might be different so wherever you are implementing your data pipeline you have to ensure that you adhere to the laws of the land that is you follow the data governance rules and standards or policies that have been laid down so these are some of the uh, best practices that you need to follow while building the data pipeline and now coming to some of the tools and frameworks that you will be using to build a data pipeline first one is apache hadoop so in this particular uh, set of slides i will be discussing all the open source tools that are used for big data as well as for building the data pipeline on an on prem so once you move into the cloud you have the similar alternatives on the cloud or you have better tools on the cloud compared to the open source ones so hadoop is one of the uh, framework that you can use to store and process large data sets that is for your big data because it is a distributed system so the data that you are storing gets uh, is residing in multiple machines that is there and because there are multiple machines you can process the data in parallel using a technique called map reduce programming second one apache spark so the spark is unified analytics engine which is built on top of hadoop that is there so spark is a framework that will help you build both batch and streaming pipeline and it is faster than hadoop because it does something called as in memory processing compared to the map reduce model of the hadoop it is much faster third one apache hive so hive is again an uh, hadoop ecosystem uh, tool or a framework that is there which will act as your data warehouse so if you want to build a data warehouse on on prem make use of apache hive so it has a language that is called as the hive ql which has similar syntax to sql so you can easily perform analysis on large amounts of data with hive next is pig so pig is a data processing framework so whenever you are processing large amount of batch data that is there so writing sql queries or the hive queries will be time consuming and hence you have a apache pig which has a pig latin language where it is a scripting language so it sits one layer above your sql so you easily define the operations in a human uh, readable format which in turn gets reduced into map reduce operation but they get executed very quickly and the programming is very simple with pig for large data sets and fifth one is apache kafka so kafka is the distributed streaming platform you want to move real time data into your pipeline kafka is the go to service which can ingest and process data in real time with millisecond kind of a latency next is apache airflow whatever the data pipeline that you have built say if it is a real time pipeline it will be running 24 bar 7 but if it is a batch pipeline we have seen previously that it will get executed at regular intervals right so to automate the working of the pipeline you can make use of apache airflow and you can you write something called as dags which is directed acyclic graphs which will trigger one process after the other process that is so that is about the data engineering the best practices and some of the tools and frameworks that uh, you can make use of so thank you for attending the uh, webinar today